tonight on Border Security. Customs wants to know what this man is hiding. I'm giving you a chance and you tell me the truth. This time, you are right. A student gives a lecture to quarantine. Yeah. But you got problem. You think so? And a teacher learns a very expensive lesson. You said it was just over 10,000. Every day, thousands of foreign visitors enter Australia. Most are here for legitimate reasons. Some aren't. It's customs job to work out which is which. Okay, you pack the bag yourself? Yes. Okay. You know what's It's 10 a.m. Passenger Adeyan has just arrived from Hong Kong. He says he's a tourist, but he seems remarkably unprepared for a holiday down under. Where are you staying in Sydney? Hmm? You haven't put down where you're staying. Where, where will you be staying in Sydney? I'm wanting to be staying in a hotel. Which hotel? Hotel around downtown. Like around downtown? Town. Yeah, around town. Have you made a booking at all yet? No. What will you see while you're in Sydney? See? Yeah, with the site. So what do you plan to do for the week? You're here for seven days? Yeah, just stay and look at everything. Just look at it. Just look at Yeah, but what? Like, just go around places, just see how the city looks Do you like. know any places in Sydney? I know I've been But well, usually if I was going to go, where are you from, the States? Mm -hmm. If I was going to New York, I might want to go and see the Statue of Liberty or, you know what I mean? So what would you want to see in Sydney? Oh, what do I want to see in Sydney? Um, I just want to, like, go around. It might be a long way to come, but he's not leaving the airport until Customs is satisfied with his story. For many young Aussies, living overseas is a rite of passage, a chance to see the world and earn some cash. But the return trip can sometimes be bumpy. Michael has spent three years teaching English in Japan. Is this your signature? Yes. OK, are these all your own bags? Yes. Did you pack them yourself? Uh, yeah. uh, Singapore. And now there's only one thing standing between him and his family, Kathleen from Customs. OK, that's fine. Anything else? Um, oh, yeah, I didn't notice this. Sorry, I've got lots of yen in my pocket. Is that okay? How much? A bit over three million. Michael didn't declare his cash on his entry card. I'm thinking that Once signed, easy. this Anything is a legal else? document. Yeah. So a false declaration like means customs will quickly it, become wait. very interested in you. Okay, so you have cash. I do have cash in my pocket. Right. Yen. That's all right. It's still it's exactly equivalent. You, you know yourself. Well, you just read it. Yeah, but I just noticed then, so I think it's more than that, so maybe that one would be a yes. All right, so approximately three, three, million. three million yen. Yeah. All right. Kendo, can you find out the conversion of three million yen? He thinks it is over 10 grand, so... $10,000 is the most you can bring into the country without declaring it to customs. Fail to declare it, and you run the risk of being fined, losing the money, and even jailed. All right, have you got your airline ticket there as well? Yeah. 38,000. What? Does that sound right? That, is it 78, the exchange rate, 78.88? 38,000. Yeah. Three years of savings. You said it was just over 10,000. This could be a very expensive lesson for the teacher. Customs officers aren't satisfied that a Dayam is a bona fide tourist. They want to check him out further. You can take this bag and just x-ray it. OK, what we're worried about is just this side here. It seems to be a bit heavier than the other side. OK, it might just be because of the wheels, but just have a good place look at that. It looks fine to me. I want to make sure that the bag is empty of this stuff here. Read it, okay, and just to make sure that you understand it. The bag checks out, but customs officer Rob is still not satisfied. When did you when did you plan to come to Australia? Like when did you buy your ticket? I bought my ticket this month. This morning. This month. This month. How much was it? I I, I bought the multiple trips. So I don't know. Multiple trips. You're not sure how much. I'm not sure how much for Australia. It's a multiple trip. How much in US dollars? Uh -huh. 
Yeah, how much all up? Uh, you know, like um, 14. 1400. 14. So how'd you pay for it? With cash or credit card? No, or? with cash. With your card? Mm -hmm. right? What we're going to do, what we're a bit worried that you might have something on your body. Okay, so what we want to do is to give you a pat down. Okay, a frisk. Back in Melbourne, our world traveller has just come back home with a thug. So you do not have to say or do anything. Anything you do say may be used in evidence. Do you understand that? How much is it here? I think a bit over 3 million. Three, Michael's 3 million yen is equal to over 38,000 Australian dollars, far exceeding the undeclared limit. How much did you take out of the bank account? I've got my bank. Uh, 3.3 million, but since then I've spent some, so I, I haven't counted it since I've actually come over here. So you're aware that it was over 30,000 Australian, roughly? You would have been aware of it. You would have been I, aware of the conversion, roughly. Vaguely, yeah. but I didn't notice the question on the card until just there. I was, was reading it more Didn't carefully. you get the card on the plane? No, I got it like from a guy in the line. Can I go back and do another card and come back? Or? No, no, it doesn't work that way. Okay. Australia tries to keep track of all the currency coming in, and obviously when you're bringing in and out of cash, there's no record of it, so that's why they need to fill out a form. Um, it's, it's basically, you, we're trying to find money launderers and that, that are bringing in lots of um, large amounts of cash. Money laundering is a global problem. Moving undeclared cash between countries can help organise crime and terror groups conceal the true source of their income. The person in the line next to me said, oh, it's, it's all just like bad things, just do no, 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 no. And that's probably where I made my mistake. I didn't You're a really teacher. carefully go through. You're right. You are a teacher, right? What yeah. do you teach? English. English. Yeah. If Michael had declared the cash, he would have been free to go after filling out a simple form. That's not going to happen now. The passenger's got over 3 million yen undeclared, so we're now going to run a few checks and also contact the federal police. Quarantine, Sydney Airport. There's some confusion over a passenger's declaration card. When I first start off, if you read and understood the questions on the I card... I understood the question, but you have to tell me that. I have to tick for that if I bring any kind of food. But you didn't tell me, actually. No, no that's what the card says. Any food, including dried, preserved, it, are, it says that on here. Yeah. Chinese so, student Fee you... Lee studies in Australia, making regular trips back to visit her family. So do you understand why we're doing this? Now officers have found undeclared food in her luggage, a breach of quarantine regulations. This stuff is free list. This is allowed in, but you still have to declare it. It's food, so it doesn't matter whether it's beef, fruit, noodles, whatever, you have to declare it, whatever you come into the country. That's why we have it on the card. That's why you get this card every time you come in. So if you have any food, you've got to mark yes on it. If you're not sure, it tells you to mark yes. Seems pretty clear, but not to Feely. Who's the responsibility for, I'm not taking yes? More responsibility. No. Yes. yes. You have to remind me No, no, we do time. remind you on this form. On this form, on the previous form, and on the previous form, every time. You didn't remind okay. me that I have to take yes. <laughs> Back in Melbourne, Michael's undeclared cash is causing him more problems than he imagined. These two officers are from the Federal Police. I just want to have a quick chat to you. The Federal Police are involved because money laundering is a federal offence. They decide now what's going to happen to Michael. So he has actually volunteered it. He said that he might have more than $10,000. Depending on what he tells the Federal Police, um, he could just get a warning and would just fill out the Austrac form and he'll be sent on his way or he could end up getting prosecuted and the currency seized from him. At quarantine in Sydney, Chinese student Fee Lee is still arguing her case to officers. 
You can bring this stuff in, but you still have to declare it because it's food. Yeah, I know. My fault is I didn't take yes, right? That's yes, right. my That's fault. Right. I know. Yeah. But you got problem. You think so? No. No, no, no you don't, don't think, think so? No, I don't think we have because the form is in your this language. This time you are right. But how about the last times? For not declaring the food, Fee Lee faces a $110 fine, a significant penalty for a struggling student. I mean, three times. I always tick no. You didn't say anything for that. You always tick no. Yep. And you brought food in with yep. you before. Yep. And I, and I always pass the x ray. Customs officer Rob was not satisfied with this passenger's answers about why he's here. Now Rob's suspicions about Adayam have paid off. The free search has come back positive. He's got something wrapped around both legs. So it looks like, yeah, we've got something here. Adayam also had three packages in his pockets. I've never seen that before. You'd strap it all on your body, not carry three in your pocket. It's easier for us to find, I guess. So what I want is just to caution you, okay, you don't have to say or do anything. Anything you do say or do may be used as evidence. Do you understand that? Yes. I've just made a cut in that. Okay, and those pellets have got white powder in them. All right? So do you know what the white powder is? At Melbourne Airport, customs officers are having a closer look at the luggage of two Indian shoe salesmen who've arrived for a three-day business trip. Right, how many? Mr. 150 something. 150, 170. 150 shoes. That's a lot of footwear. The officer is concerned that the men haven't organised a carnet for import and export clearance. It's basic business practice and the sort of oversight which makes customs sceptical. All right, they've got approximately 150 shoes, left and right shoes. Um, they're saying to us that they're only one shoe, they're not pairs. Um, what we're ba basically saying to them is we understand that, um, but there could be another suitcase coming in via another passenger. We're not saying that's what's happening, but um, it could happen. It could come through another port, maybe Sydney, Brisbane or somewhere else. You need to get this to a broker, okay, and have those shoes entered into Australia as a sample if you don't wish to have them drilled, okay? Otherwise, we will need to drill them. The salesmen are faced with a tough choice. Immediately find a broker or drill a hole in every shoe. Meanwhile, in another part of customs, Michael has returned from teaching English in Japan, but he failed to properly read his passenger card and didn't declare cash well over the $10,000 limit. The federal police then became involved. The federal police have spoken to the passenger and they're going to give him a, a warning and just fill out a, a cash form and he'll be, he'll be okay to go. It could have gone either way, basically because I was uh, unable to finish the form correctly and I made a mistake and I said that I didn't make any mistakes. They had the option to take me to court and confiscate my money and it would have been a very serious matter. Um, in this situation I didn't, didn't have to go through that but it was close. Uh, it would be bad saving all that money and saying bye bye to it so quickly for little result but mm, now I've got some spending money. Chinese student Fi Li has returned to Australia with a lot of undeclared food. We've got a passenger who's declared nothing on a card, open up a bag and there's a lot of food in there. Quarantine records all warnings given to passengers. And she's on the computer, she had a, a verbal warning given to her in 2002. And that's basically all we need. Last time when we, yeah. had, we took meat off you. And Sorry? You, you, we took no, some meat no, off no. you last time. You see my passport. How many times I came in Australia? Quite a few times. Yeah. About four times yeah. you've been in and out of Australia, right? Yeah. Okay. And last time they took some meat off you? 
Yeah, yeah. just first time. Yeah, the first time. That's right. And they gave you a written warning at that time. Yeah. At that took point in time, they could have actually given you a, a two hundred and twenty dollar fine then. Right. Yeah. So again, it says, do you have any food? Yeah, I know. So every time that you come in and out of this country, you must declare your food. It's now up to Stephen and Dennis to decide whether to find this student. She's already been warned, so is a repeat offender, and it's not looking good for her. The two Indian shoe salesmen must now decide. Immediately find a broker to properly import their samples of shoes, or take each shoe and destroy them one by one. They've gone for the drilling option. A hole in each shoe will ensure that the men are unable to sell the shoes, which, if paired, could be worth thousands of dollars. I don't want you to get injured if it, if it breaks, all right? <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. OK. It's their property still. Um, I'm not going to. Um, I don't think the Australian government or customs want to deface somebody else's property. We're requesting that they do it. It's their sample they want to bring in. So yeah, basically that's why we do it. Suspicions about this passenger have paid off. Customs officers have discovered he's carrying heroin. What we're going to want to do now is I want to get you undressed, take your clothes off and have a look at and see what you've got around your body. At the moment, I'll, I'll ask you again, I'll give you a chance, OK? Can, can you tell me what it is? You mean what's the same? Yeah. I don't... What I think it is, I think that it's heroin. OK? You don't know? So you still don't want to tell me what it is? No, I don't know what it is. Okay. Customs have caught a dam red-handed. He's just got three pellets in his pockets. During the frisk search, we've also found uh, around his calves, there appears to be a body pack. We don't know what it is yet, but we've just done the iron scan, so we'll wait and see. And he, he hasn't told us what it is yet, but um, there's obviously something there. The question is, why would anyone try to walk through customs with drugs in their pocket? Customs could think of any number of reasons, but only a Adayam knows, and he's not saying much. Who gave it to you? Where'd you get it from? Um, I got it from Hong Kong. Yeah, who, who, where in Hong Kong? Who gave it to you? I, I don't know the guy. I don't know the guy. What, so someone just gave you pellets of white powder? There's something around your leg and you don't know who he was. I don't think you're telling me the truth. Yes, I think I don't, I don't know. You're not telling me the truth. I'm no. giving you a chance that you tell me the truth. Sir, the person who came, I don't know the name of the person who came. I don't know. Well, where was it? Or where did you meet him? I didn't meet him. I was just like, <clears throat> You have a think about it. I'm going to ask you a couple more questions in a minute. But you're in some pretty serious trouble already. You have to think about if you're going to tell me the truth next time I ask you a question, all right? Yes, sir. This time, this time, this time, you have not declared your it's food unfair. item. No, Feely's been hit with a $110 fine. No. This could be the only way to make her understand the importance of Australia's quarantine law. So if we don't charge you this time, next time you won't do it again. Yeah, next time I will take it, yes. yes. I will remember. Right. But I, I'm just asking you why you didn't tell, didn't tell me for the second time. I just said, for the second time. You probably were told the second time, and you were probably told the third time. They definitely would have told you when they gave you the warning because that's part of giving you a warning is explaining what you've done wrong so you don't make that's that exactly mistake right. next time. She's not happy and I can see why she's not happy but some of these people we have to get through to and they don't learn. 
I'm, a, I'm an overseas student. I'm traveling to Australia, and I didn't know that I, I have given a warning on a computer system. Um, actually, I think on the card, I think um, it said that like. Did you take anything which is not allowed to bring to Australia? I think my food is okay because my kind of food could be found in supermarket. I think it's okay. That's why that's why I always bring food and I always take no on the card. The point is, unless you get through to these people in the first place, that they do need to declare the items. That's the whole idea of what we're trying to do is to get people to declare things. We can make the decision as to what's allowed and what's not allowed, um, and we can either give them back to them or, or tell them it's prohibited. There's nothing lost if they declare the items. The big point is when they don't declare the items. Uh, at the start of the examination, he was pretty, he was okay, he was pretty cool. Um, towards when the the pellets were located in his pocket, he started to, to get a little bit more nervous and he's become a bit more rigid in his, in his, his movements and his stance. That's over one kilogram of heroin strapped to a Adam's calves with a street value of $600,000. He was intending to be here for one week. Chances are he's going to be here for a lot longer. He's been pretty calm all the way through. He wasn't aggressive or he wasn't upset or whatever, but He's sort of now his demeanor is his, the game's up. Adayam Fawali was charged with importing prohibited goods. He pleaded guilty. Next week on Border Security, a coffee maker with a real kick. Yes, bingo. He's got something to hide and he's not giving it up. We've wanted to do a frisk search on this passenger. He's refused. Uh, we're going out there now, we're going to um, lay some, uh, some charges on it. We want to get out of there before it goes up. And Indonesian fishing boats create a firestorm.